And break number one, maybe get that scoreboard up there for us. This would be a lot more complicated if there was no touch in the back ball. So forget about the one ball. All right, nice little overhead view here. Uh, the nine ball went long and the five went short, but the one, ooh, did anything go down? Yeah, he dropped, what did he drop? Absolutely nothing. He dropped rack right oh, number yeah. one is what he dropped. Yeah, just seen that seven's hanging there. Yeah, I ain't the one. I think it's even kind of, kind I'd of take even here. Well, I'd, I'd have to bet even money that he's out here. It's maybe like a, I don't know. I don't really see any true trouble. I mean, maybe even if he did get goofy and get jacked up on the six from the two to the three, the four is laying in the hole. I, I mean, I just don't see any opportunity that he gets screwed up here. Well, uh, that's no, you know I'm a Shane fan, so I'm gonna text Federer and try to distract him, see if he still wants to bet. <laughs> well, you be careful, he might bet you. <laughs> I he may go for go it. Out. Yeah, here we go. We'll see how he plays this. I mean, I, I guess the the six to the seven. I mean, there's not anything real challenging. I always hate to say like, oh, he's out, he's out, but. I'm just looking for an opportunity for him to screw up here. I think it's really the two to the three. Um, and as long as he has a look at the three, he should be okay because the four is yeah, just I think playing this, there. This is the shot right here, I think. Just hold, hold it with inside, I guess. Yeah, he's just going to play for the 6-10 window there. A nice job. I mean, I guess the seven to the eight could be a little goofy just because of how deep the seven is. It could be potentially be tough to obtain shape or something goofy could happen. You could hit the point. Um, well, you could you could do a five seven combo. Yeah, it's usually not the case at this level. If all balls go, you're going to see them just playing where they lay. He's going to do just that. Yeah, I mean, really, it's just, it's all about staying in line here. And it, I, I mean, it just depends on where the seven is at in the hole, if it's even tough at all. But if you were betting even money, you could have got a lot of action there, Phil. Yeah. Yeah, race to 11 is a nice long race, though. I like this. Sing I, I, I really do like this format of this tournament. Single elimination, long race, um, no touch in the one. I think it's. I think it is a, a great format for a 10-ball pro event. The only thing I may change would be the, the alternate break. Outside of that, I think 11 is kind of the sweet spot where it's it's not too long, but it's not too short. And I kind of like the single elimination if it start if the tournament starts off single elimination. I think it's okay. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't like that single down to the end. I don't think that's very fair. In my opinion. I don't either. It's just yeah, it's happened. It's happened so many times in the European events where where Federer will, you know, go undefeated, then he'll lose first round of the single elimination, maybe to even a guy that he beat, and it just feels wrong. You know, it just doesn't yeah, feel right. I agree. Here. That's the way I feel with those when they switch that, where it's not a true double dip. I'm I'm a fan of the double dip. I don't think it's fair that I should lose one match and you could have lost two. Or it's, I don't know. I like I like the true double dips. I just like the consistency. Whatever you start with is what I want you to finish with. Kind of. I mean, if you don't have the timing of the four railer down, um, you know, it, you're really just kind of selling the farm. So yeah, I think that's I why. You know, I, I, I prefer the, the break cutting the one in the side and just trying to deposit a ball and defending yourself from there in this format. Nonetheless, the seven and the eight both hit points and just barely missed. This table must be racking pretty good, Phil. Like you said, Shane made both wing balls and then he barely missed both wing balls and then Feder had both wing balls hit the point, two points. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, it's going to take them a little bit to get adjusted. They're going to have to make if they're. It looks like they're going a little high. 
So they're going to have to bring the cue ball out towards the rail just a little bit here. You'll see them adjust a little bit, I would think. Shane doesn't really like to adjust very much, though. That's one thing I've noticed with him. He likes to, you know, I think he tries to figure out if maybe I didn't execute as well as he should have. So he tries to get that down, and then sometimes it's too late. I watched, if you remember, do you remember Shane playing Dennis 10 ball, that big match they had with Roy? I mean, oh, Dennis, yeah. like a hundred times. I mean, like, move your cue ball, dude. Like, what are you doing? Like, it's not working. Like, you have to adjust your cue ball. 100% of the time, his wing balls all went high. And Dennis is the one that told me, if they're going high, you bring your cue ball out to the rail. Like, why aren't you doing that? I can understand yeah, if you want to try it five, six, seven times to see if maybe you're not executing. But after that, like, adjust your cue ball, man. Move the location. Yeah, and there's, you know, another thing is that the spot's pretty big. So you can adjust up and down on the rack. There's a lot of different things, the tempo of how you hit, the power. Um, but, you know, that's that's the thing that Dennis is the best in the world at, I think, is adjusting. And if his opponent is doing something, he is the first one to rip it off if it's working. Dennis is, is the absolute king of that. But I can promise you this, in preparation for events like this, Better is, is definitely uh, a workman and he has multiple different breaks that he can go to in any format no matter what the format is he spends multiple hours um, just kind of working on different things and because every single table is different you may get there the balls may be dirty the spot may be pounded in the middle you may not be able to get the balls tight in certain spots so every single every single set of balls could be different you could be you know struggling to get on the rack right the, the triangle could be off a little bit there's so many different variables that could happen whenever you get to a tournament like this. So you have to have multiple ways to break the balls. And, you know, if you, if you go there and you only have one option and it's not working, what are you going to do? Um, so I, I, I love that about Feder. He is always willing to put in the time. And meanwhile, he overruns a seven ball here, but he should be able to recover. But he always has multiple breaks and multiple strategies um, if one is not working. So you'll see him maybe be stubborn and, and go to what he thinks is the highest probability of, of making a ball on the break. And he'll do it a couple, maybe three times, and then he'll adjust. Um, but yeah, he's definitely willing and able to, to go to different breaks in any format. And you have to be, I think if you're trying to be a pro, that's just something that comes with it. You know, if you want to put in the time on the break shot, it's the most important. All these guys run out. It's just whether or not you can get a shot after the break. Meanwhile here, Feder looking to steal Shane's first break. And we'll go up two to zero, breaking the balls. It may be a disadvantage to break the balls here, though. That's something that'll be interesting yeah. to watch. Yeah. <laughs> he played real stout against uh, Jesus Atencio. Jesus was breaking probably the best of anybody on these tables, and John was able to uh, grind it out and get the win. So. Hey, go ask Jesus who taught him how to break nine ball. <laughs> yeah, go ask him. Uh, Shane got the four railer down, but no real good look at the one ball here, so. We'll see what he opts to do. I think he's going to play some type of safe here. Right, that's what I was talking about. And it's just so important to be able to deposit some something on this break format because even if you can't run out, you have the ability to control the table and control your opponent. So Shane did get the four roller down. Trying to get the cue ball into the five here. I think he may have left him the window there. That's pretty unlucky. He did. I think Feder could see the whole ball. I'm staring right yeah, down. Right. I can I can see he can't see the full ball. I don't. Oh no, actually he can. He can see the whole ball. How unlucky is that? Look at that. Four balls, caddy <laughs> corners scattered like that. And there's one direct line right through it, and that's where he hits. It's funny how often that happens. You know it. More of keyholes. <laughs> I don't know. Is he, he's queuing this up like he's going at it. I don't think he can make this ball right. 
he was playing safe and he got a double kiss. He kind of had to get fortunate here. I don't think he did. He sold the farm to SVB. Uh, it's kind of tough to tell. Another one of those deceiving moments on the computer, on the camera, but I think he can pocket it. He got a little funny here, Phil. Got a, really close to the long rail. It yeah, should be I agree okay. With that. But he could just lay it up, and it, the five is next, right? I'm screen so little. Steven's got everything minimized. I need a mic. Yeah, it's, it's you know it's pretty. You expect him to make it, but it's about as tough as it could have been, going the way that he went. Recovered nicely. Yeah, I completely lost the screen, guys. Oh, way better. It's coming back. Yeah, I think he's okay here now. I mean, this this is the shot, the five to the six, but not very hard. Yeah, interesting. I wouldn't have went that way. I guess that's why I'm not a champion. Did you get it back, Jason? No, it's still just spinning. Okay. But it's all right. I'm on the backup stream, and it definitely looks like SVB is going to clean these last few balls up here, claim our third rack. It will be Fetter's break. I misspoke a moment ago. Shane won the lag, so he's breaking on even or on odd. And Phil, do you have video? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, Mike hates me. Roll the table. He came so close to both wing balls, I do expect him to, to try this and try to figure it out, like Phil said. Maybe slide out to the long rail a little bit or just change the tempo or the pop on the cue ball, trying to adjust the wing balls. He is looking for the six and the eight ball to go into the side pockets. We're calling those the wing. And lost his cue ball right in the drink. No good. Ball in hand for SVB. Chance to tie it up and be breaking the balls. Relatively easy out here too. He doesn't have a doesn't have a tough tough out here. I mean, it's really just getting. Man, I don't know. I don't really see much trouble here. Maybe the I maybe guess. the four to the five is is uh, you know with the six being there, he's got to get good on the five ball. Um, yeah. Not you a guys, of, not did a you guys, traffic. Did you guys see James Leone's post with Shane in the car? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was hilarious. That was hilarious, yeah. If you're not friends with James Leon, the, the uh, owner of Buffalo, you got to go out mad, and he's always posting something that'll make you smile. I was going to I was gonna comment, Shane does come to Omega events, just saying, but, you know, i got to be diplomatic. Hey, no, you should. <laughs> I, I, you know what's funny is you had a comment, and you wanted to make it, and you didn't. I had a comment, and I wanted to make it, and I didn't, but... You know, I'm like, man, I, I don't mind being a jerk, but I don't want to be that brutal. <laughs> he was going to say he rolled down the – he said he rolled down the window and, and asked Shane if he was going to come to Buffalo. I was say, Shane didn't even hear what he said. He just flipped him off. <laughs> That's funny. Well, here's the shot right here. This, I think this is the key. Yeah, and this is pretty touchy at this range here. I don't think we're going to see him do a ton with the cue ball, and you're going to see him just pop off the rail just the hair. <laughs> Go ahead and give himself the distance. That's what I was talking about. The four to the five could present some problems. Um, and, you know, he's, he does, it does look like he has some angle here, and he could go forward um, or he could pull the ball back. But I don't think the five passes the ten. So I do think he's either going to have to play in the side or down here in the bottom right. So he, he, could, he could draw the ball or he could follow it. Um, I think he's going to opt to, to 
kind of punch out here and draw. But this is tough. You know, this is this is what I said. This is the only oh, he, shot. He was, he was going to draw and he stopped. I, I kind of like to go forward, but yeah, I guess you can I, go either way. I mean, the five is pretty big. I tell you the truth, I really like just following the ball and playing the five on the yeah, side. I, do, I know I it's too. tough. One hundred percent, I'm I'm on that. He's not. It didn't look like he went. He got down twice to do that, but that's exactly what I think. I just think I just think it makes the pocket play a little bigger at this angle. Um, if you go ahead and because you, you can hit it kind of smooth and get through the ball, you just can't really stun it because you could get into the eight. But even if you do that, um, you could still play the five in the bottom right. So we'll see how he decides to play it. He went forward and he did come for the side. Yeah, he's, that was he's a good. decision. Yeah, good to go. And I may be behind still. I still don't see anything on our Zoom chat. I'm watching on the backup, so I may be a few seconds behind. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I can't, I can't even see the the uh, the scoreboard on on our on my side. You can't see the scoreboard. No, I cannot. Okay, That's something I'll have to work out in the future. I don't know why. But regardless, Shane, six here. Well, yeah, I, was, I mean, let's, let's just call it what it was. That was an unbelievable shot in the four ball, and that was the challenge of the whole entire rack. We called it out at the beginning, and he handled it with perfection. So looking to clean yeah, up so a few balls here to tie it up. 2-2, two, two, Shane breaking, correct? Correct. Yep, 2-2, two two, Shane break. <laughs> man i've seen those pictures out there steven it looks like a hell of an event man a lot of fun i really do wish that i did get out there i i think you would have really enjoyed it here the food is good the venue is excellent um what's really nice is over there on that bar box they actually have their own lighting rig set up on that table for when they stream their own events um, and Phil and Jason, y'all have seen the lighting rig that we use. I mean, this is it's not a small thing, uh, but uh, they they put a lot of time into this venue. So, yeah. Yeah, Rob, really Robert's awesome. been Robert's been awesome, man. He's he's been so great this whole you know these last couple of months getting this match set up. Didn't want to spare any expense and really did a great job, in my opinion. Really. So Jason, uh, he, Robert messaged my, uh, Mike and I. He was like, man, Steven's so great. He's doing a great job. I said, no, Steven's awesome, man. I said, he may eat you out of house at home, but he's a great guy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you better. I, if, I ever have, if I ever host a pool tournament and you negotiate the bar tab, I'm, I'm having a dollar. <laughs> I'm going to say, Steven can only order off the dollar menu because he will straight bust you. <laughs> Guarantee it. <laughs> Uh, oh man, Scott and Scott and Fetter match. I look up and I see uh, it's like every eight minutes they're delivering him something else. So I'm like, no. well, this dude just try to everything on the menu, man. Going ham. You you know what happened there? I I feel I ordered food, and I asked them if they could just put it in for a certain time, and they said yes. And then they told me that they forgot about it, and I was like, that's okay. Let me let me just get something else. And so they bring me the food that I order the second time, and then 10 minutes later, they bring me the scheduled food. And I was like, oh, this God. Dude, this dude schedules his meals. That's how, that's how, that's how strict he is, man. He's like, bring me, the, bring me a oh pizza at 4 o'clock. It's like 8 a.m. <laughs> hey, you get in the booth, especially with Jason. Jason is uh, really good at, at uh, doing everything in the booth. Um and uh and so i just kind of like get to sit there and hang out and uh uh I, but <laughs> jason hey that pizza was good though we shared that pizza and it yeah. was good man i'll tell you what phil we always talk about like the the little little minor details of these players is really what sets them apart when I mean, you look at like fetter and, and shane i think i've said this before um i think i, I mentioned it whenever Fetter or whenever shane and dennis were playing uh, one of their long matches, but I think the thing that sets Shane apart from every other elite player is his push-outs. I don't know what he does, I don't know how he does it, but he always wins his push-outs. It's, I mean, it's it's the most unique way of pushing out I've ever seen. It's usually offensive, it's usually shots that nobody will take on, and I don't know what it is. I, I'm telling you, I've watched Shane play for a lot of that's hours. A, that's a really good point. Yeah, I, I never really thought about it until you said it, and that's, yeah, that's that's a great point. 
He pushes but, out better than anybody. Great, what me. a great shot there to get to the two. I mean, that's that's awesome. That's that's how you win matches right here. Yeah, and he's still got his work cut out. Looks like the four ball is covered up by the five, and the six is covered up with the yeah. nine. So he's going to have to uh, manufacture. Yeah, I don't think that nine ball goes on a combo, that's for sure, but he's still got to worry about the four. And I think we'll see him play a safe off of the four ball here and try to weld him to the back of the five. Um, I think it's what he's looking at right now is, is what angle he would like to do that. He would definitely like to get ball in hand and try to figure out a way to be able to open up the 6-9. But as it sets right now, there does really no reward for being offensive here. Uh, everybody's blasting what, what you were saying on Facebook with Tony giving up a ball. Did you see that yet, Jason? <laughs> no. I didn't. It looks like Melina Mike made something and quoted you. If Tony wants to give up a ball, he can get played. I tagged you and called you a nit, but uh, now there we're you go. all over the place. <laughs> well, man, I tell you what, you got to be careful what you say with all these pool detectives running around. But, you know, the good <laughs> news is, the good news is I'll stand by what I said. Doesn't matter. I mean, if, if anybody thinks that Fetter can beat Tony even, stake him. You know, that's what I'll tell yeah. you. I mean, I, it doesn't matter. Like I, I, I love Fetter's game, and I'm Fetter's biggest fan. And you know, I've, I've watched the progressions of his career. I've been involved in every part of it. And you know, he's just not ready to play Tony. I mean, it's not being a nit. It's just being. It's the reality of no, the no, situation. I'm, I'm gotcha. No, it's good. I, I, though. it's definitely, definitely. It could be. You know, some people could say it's being nitty, but you know, it's, I, there's no reason to to put him in a situation that um, is is not advantageous to make money. I mean. Um, you know, it's, it's but, fine. You gotta, you gotta, gotta, like, yeah, I, don't wanna get, I don't want to kind of get into this again because we already got complaints, but you do got to kind of see it from Tony's eyes, right? Like, if it's a tight match, I get it. Or if Chip wins, I get it. But if he dominates Chip, it's going to be very hard for Tony to want to give up any spot if he dominates Chip and Tony gives up a little bit to Chip. You know what I mean? So well, that's how Tony, Tony gave Chip a little bit. Tony gave Chip a little bit and dominated him. So, I mean. Yeah. But he uh, also gave something to Chip and, and didn't dominate him too, right? So. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I agree. Guess I know. It depends. But, yeah, it's it's tough. It's it's tough. It, that, that match is going to be tough to match up because I could see both sides of it. No question about it. Yeah. You have, you have every argument down. There's no question about it. I think what happens with Chip and Fedor is going to be a big, big indication of who can kind of you know, one up the argument a little bit, right? Yeah, and you know, honestly, to tell you the truth, I hate to like put this out here because Maureen is probably going to go blast this too. But you know, I mean, there's 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 just not a lot of future in playing Tony. I mean, even even if I think Feder can beat him, what 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 good does it do? Like, it basically, just kills all action. There's no not another game ever. I mean, it's hard enough to get somebody to put their money up. But I mean, like a game like Roberto that I think is truly 100% gambling. Even if it was 100% game when you go and beat Tony, you're not going to get played. Nobody's yeah. going to bet on nobody's going to bet on Roberto if you go and beat Tony. I mean, nobody's staking Roberto to no, play Tony. Yeah, like I said, you you got valid points all the way around. You know, coming from the the gambling mind of it, there's no question about that. So, I get it. I mean, it will happen. Let's just put it that way. I, you know, better. And Tony, if if Tony's willing to, to you know sign a contract and post the money up, and we can pick the date in the next three years, I, I'll guarantee you that that we'll play. Um, it's just not right now. He's just not ready right now. If I thought he was ready, I'd let him play. I just don't think he's ready, and I, I think it kills a lot of other games that I do think he's ready for. And I do think that he has a chance of winning that maybe six months ago I wouldn't have let him play. So, yeah. Here we go. Nice shot by SVB, creating some distance there. I do think that Feder can see the ball. But yeah, I don't know how it is. The pool detectives. You got to be careful, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Molina Mike. So he's famous for it. He's he's quick. That, and that's funny. I was telling Mike that yesterday. If there's absolutely anything going on in the pool world or I want to know when a match starts or if there's a link I'm absolutely going to Melina Mike's page and I'm scrolling down and I find it 100% of the time so that's funny I, I, probably, I got like a bedroom with like a command center and 18 TVs up <laughs> well it's funny because we posted the match the flyer of Chip and Fedor 
uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday. And as soon as we shared it on the stream, he shared it, and I realized that the race was missing. And I was like, oh, he's the first person I thought of because I knew that flyer was going to get out there by him, and it did, and there's no race on the flyer. Scott messaged me. He's like, all right, this is great. Are they just going to play endless? <laughs> I was laughing. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, there's no race on the flyer. I was like, oh, God. Oh, man. Meanwhile, Fetter sold out here. It looks like the six does pass. Not an easy shot being frozen no, to the rail. A shot for sure. On the rail like that. Definitely rather be shooting it than your opponent shooting it. He's going to play safe. Handled very nicely by SVB there. Nice containing shot. <laughs> Oh, I see Federer go two rails at this ball. So, long race, Federer Shane, 10 ball, win a break, rack your own, touching the one. What's your prediction? Uh, one wood rack? Uh, no, it would be an Accurac, like, like all our other matches. Uh, what size pockets? Hmm, good question. Good question. I would say four and a quarter. Uh, the, way, the way Shane played Chang, same exact everything. 188 Fetter. Ooh. Strong. All right, Mike, Molina, Mike, go make your flyer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, I think that uh, I think that Shane's an unbelievable player. I just, I just think that it's going to be hard for anybody to uh, hold up under a long race with Fetter. I just think he's too consistent. And just you know, and, and that break with that template when he finds it. I mean, it's just curtains. The one's just laying in the hall. Ask, ask Jeffrey DeLuna. He'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, was I mean, it's a that. joke. It's not even It's not even pool, man. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I hate to say it like that, but after you watch that, I mean, after I watch him do what he does with that template in those long races, and then I go and I watch, like, normal players, I'm like, man, they suck. <laughs> but it's not that they suck. It's just an absolute joke what he's able to accomplish. On, oh, no. on a nine-foot table with the consistency that, was, that he that was a big, That's for sure. To beat Jeff DeLuna by, what did he beat him by, like 30? I don't even know. Whatever. I mean, whatever it was, we were laughing after two hours. I mean, it was just an absolute it was, joke. Uh, it was 44 uh, games. Okay. Yeah, so he did go two rounds. 44. Right? What? Yeah. I, I was actually, I was just editing this match, and I, I got a, a weird little stat for you. Um, on Fetter's breaks, over 70% of the time, the 8, 9, and 10 were coming within, uh, if I had to guess on the table, probably seven inches of where they were every single time. Pretty wow. pretty cool yeah. deal. Meanwhile, SVB looking to capture rack number five here and take his first lead after trailing two to nil. Fetter had a nice kick shot but sold out with it. So, good reward for SVB's strong safety play. But, yeah, I mean, I, listen, Phil, I would love to see it happen. I mean, I think there'd be a ton of money bet. I think that you'd have people in both camps, you know, going, shipping it in. You'd have people betting both sides. I, I hate to see it. I hate to see the, the matches to where you can't offer enough odds to get somebody to take the other side. Um you know, I just like it's just so one-sided, or you know, you get somebody that's a three-to-one favorite in matches. I, I just think if, if Shane and Fetter played a long race, or Filler or Shane or Fetter and Filler, or you know, even Shane, I mean, um, it, it's just pure gambling. It's who feeling better, who's going to find the break, what size of the pockets. There's like so many different things that I think just completely alter the the full pace. I mean, there's still options. I don't think it's going to be the four or five years. I think there's a possibility. I just don't think it's going to be in no couple of months unless he gets super lucky. Yeah, I fed it right back to the middle. Same break right here. Private jet out there. I don't know. Sneaky man. Time to hit the Mexico border. <laughs> yeah, we'll put a wig on him. Yeah, meanwhile, Fetter struggling with the break, but he did fluke one in. And it's looking like he's going to have to open up with a combo here, Phil. Maybe the one nine. Yeah, it's his only shot. I don't see him playing safe here. I mean, I, I think he's going to get aggressive there. I mean, it's 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 out away from the pocket a little bit. It's not extremely hard, but it ain't no hanger combo. That's for sure. 
Yeah, and you know the the one thing about Fetter, there's there's two weaknesses that he will admit about his game. Number one is combos, and number two is rolling the ball. Um, if he has to, you know, shoot a nine foot shot and just pocket speed, he hates it. Um, he hates rolling the ball. He likes to get through it. But combos are his least favorite thing in pool. It's probably because he's not perfect at them yet. But nonetheless, he knocked that one down. Yeah, good shot. See how he handles the rest of the rack here. Let's take a peek and see if there's any troubles. I mean, I, I, I don't see any real issues here. Maybe right here, the three to the five, but be interested to see. I think he can just pull it right over with no problem. And he is able to. And yeah, pretty straight here. So you're going to have to play the six in the top right, but no problem at all because the seven is available in the bottom right. We're going to see him probably cruise to a three to three tie here. Barring a skid or some other crazy event. But yeah, we set that one up, Phil. You'll have all kinds of you'll have all kinds of love. Everybody will quit ragging on you in the chat if you um, have the opportunity to set up SVB versus Better. And you're right, I think they're they're Q Tech teammates. The problem is, if it doesn't happen in the next few years, I'm afraid that it won't. Yeah, I don't know. We, we Feder, Shane, and I were just talking about it in in a in a group chat together. I don't know, maybe four or five days ago. I think Shane doesn't think it's going to happen. It was it was extremely close to happening, and then it went up the ladder. And I think it's. It had a lot to do with, you know, with the ban and the controversy that can kind of come about it. Um, it wasn't because they're both part of QTech, which I thought would have been the issue, but that didn't seem to be the issue. Um, obviously, both players are super respectful. There's never any kind of fighting or arguing with those kind of guys. So I don't think they were worried about that. So I, I, I think it could happen. It's just a matter of, you know when it's going to happen in my opinion but you know once again like i said you do got to think about what the fans want right and these two guys are the two best in the world and obviously you throw filler in there right but um it's it's what the fans want to see i mean you know shane's claim that that he could play with that caliber of one pocket player i think it's the same exact situation you could play Shane and Fetter, and we could bet 5,000 in the middle, like 10,000 in the middle, five from each side. There'd be a million dollars bet on the side, and they would both play their hearts out. Like, yeah, I agree. Shane I, I don't, doesn't honestly, want anybody to take him off top. Jason, I, I, don't think, I don't think it was a money thing at all. I thought the money, the, the, the gambling of it would have been the issue, and when we spoke to who we needed to speak to, it was not the issue. So I don't think it, yeah. it had to do with the money. Um, hey, I uh, think a little bit had to do with just the timing of everything, of what was going on with the ban and the war and all that stuff. So I think that had a lot to do with it. So I do think that this match will happen because we were probably 90% about locking that match in, and then it just kind of went sideways for a minute. So I'm not giving up on it. I know Omega Mike's not giving up on it. I know Federer is very adamant about playing, and Shane... He wants to play. It's just a matter of, you know, what, whether they can play or not. So um, yeah, I don't want to we'll, interrupt. Uh, I apologize, but uh, I, I did what you said, Phil. I, uh, I, I got the Russian cupcake on commentary. Here she is. Hello, oh, Christina. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. I'm going to see you soon. Are you going to be in a... Yeah, you Wichita Falls? You'll be in Wichita, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to swing through for a little bit, I believe. I'm not too far, so. Nice. Yeah, I think I'm going to swing through. I don't know if I'm going to stay for the whole, both events, but I'll make a special appearance. Okay. As long as Jason's coming and buying lunch. As long as Steven's not coming to lunch, I might not be able to afford to get home. <laughs> I, I'm coming to lunch whether you want, want you to You got to refinance the house. <laughs> no kidding. Sell the Tesla. We're, we're, coming. we're going to McDonald's, I guess. <laughs> it don't matter. Oh, man, I miss that Chinese food in South Carolina. That's all I keep thinking about. I, I, really, you I was literally thinking about that, like, I don't know, an hour ago. Of course you were. Yes, I was. What's going on, Miss Christina? Uh, we're hanging in there. 
trying You're to survive. You're out there beating up men still? I'm trying. I lost to um, Roberto yesterday on a hill, playing absolutely mm. stupid safety. I almost got him, <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a tough hill. Yeah, I, I saw the I saw the break you had on him and how you had to push out for the two ball. Yeah. Meanwhile, right. Fetter's giving that ball in hand here. Yeah. So Christina, you're still you're still in in the nine ball, correct? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna play soon. That's all right. You just gotta take a scenic route now. Yeah, but if uh, both of us, me and Fetter, is gonna win a couple of matches, we'll play together again. Mm. Christina, are you uh, are you open to doing some lessons at the at the venue where they're playing their active match? Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll 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 look into it for you. Thank you. Hey, uh, anytime. Phil, did you get a chance to watch the bar box match between Alex Calderon and this young lady from Argentina? Her name is. Uh, I did not. I did not. Soledad Ayala. Um, she just got back from the World Games. She shoots really good. It was very impressive watching. She did lose to Alex, um, but she was very, very impressive. Um, I think at some point watching her and Christina play would be phenomenal. Yeah, tell her, tell her, tell her Christina said heads. <laughs> she uh, yeah. she played good, and I know Christina plays good, but uh, we we don't often get great uh, female players willing to play each other, and I, I feel like that's something that might could happen. Oh, we'll get set it up, Stephen. You can stake her, and I'll stake Christina. Uh, I, I didn't hey, say I'm not a, What did Jay used get her to, to come say? to Wichita Falls? What did Jay used to say, Phil? I'm just the promoter. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I tell you what, Christina, I, I, I wanted to uh, tell you, I told Feather this morning, I started wolfing at Margaret to see if she wanted to play you some. Now that she's been in the school of Tyler Steyer, maybe she's ready to come after Christina and see if she can hold up. Maybe. Yeah, let's get a doubles match, too. Do that, too. Mm hmm Yeah, we'll add some money to that. Christina, you smiling yet? <laughs> yeah. All right. We should Christina definitely loves to play. Something like this. That would be really she fun. She can't get the men to play her. Forget about the females. Well, she, I, I'm telling you, I think that Margaret and her would be a really, really good match. Yeah, play, I, I would I like bet. to see that match. They don't have to bet high. They just got to bet something. Like right, you said, sometimes, right here, right? sometimes it's just about giving the fans what they want, Phil. Yep. Yeah, he's dry, but no offensive shot for SVB, so he's going to have to roll out here, I think. Christina, what do you like here? Where would you go? Um, I don't think he can see Womble at all, can he? I don't think Maybe. so. Yeah, it's what about not... kicking the one and try to get the one behind the four or something, go that way? I don't know. Tough. You traffic. don't really got much of the cue ball to hit. Yeah. He's looking at pushing out over here on the long rail. I kind of like that. Then kick it one rail. Oh. So what I was just talking about, Christina, the, the thing that I think separates Shane from a lot of the elite is his ability to, to roll out and pushes out as good as anybody, but he's getting this one back. I think he was trying to give himself just the edge of the one. I think he's completely snookered. Gonna have to kick. <laughs> there goes Melina Mike, Federer versus Roberto, bar table 10 ball. <laughs> oh, yeah? I love him. <laughs> in the control center, in the control center, Melina Mike. Tell him to create that flyer, Margaret versus Christina, and see what kind of money we can get up on both sides. Melina Mike's got ammo for days after listening to, to you guys. <laughs> Well, we, we want to make sure he has enough content to be able to post for the rest of the week. <laughs> I'm trying to help our buddy out. And this is really tough here. He's going to have to kick and really tough to control the cue ball. It's like he is going to use some inside here. And he got yeah. a loser. 
He might have got away with murder there, huh? Tricky spot here for Fetter. Jason, what do you think about trying to maybe clip the one and come behind the nine four? Is that a possibility? Yeah, it's just tough to tell from this angle if the side pockets in the way and how much of the one he would have to hit. But I definitely think that's the path. But is it a three ball in the way? I'm not sure about that. That's that. I mean, it would be close for sure because he's going to have to go two rails to get behind the nine. Yeah, he's going to have to go. I think he's going to have to go in between the 310 um, to do your shot. Oh, he found it's the simpler tricky way. This close. He found the simpler way to do it. Good yeah, shot there. Three, three, six. Very nice shot. Perfect speed control. The object ball in the cue ball. So, Christina, you got anything in the works? You got any matches lined up or anything you can tell the fans about? Not really. Um, I mean, it's it's hard to set up any gambling matches, especially with men. Uh, so I'm just stick to playing tournaments, giving a lot of lessons. So, yeah, I haven't, as you know, <clears throat> Jason, I haven't been really playing uh, much practicing lately because of my back issues. So I had to take it easy for some time. Uh, so now I feel a little bit out of shape, but I'm feeling so much better with my back now. So I'm, I'm waiting to go back home and put some work in it. And get back in action, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you know, if you play a certain level for some time and then you cannot maintain the same level because you know you just simply haven't been practicing at all it's kind of frustrating and I hate this feeling honestly not playing you know not being fully in charge of your abilities to execute so um, yeah um, I'm already uh, planning scheduling my practicing and planning what I'm gonna do how I'm gonna get back in shape so yeah I'm excited for that and plus they, I think, yeah. I think I think you just sold me to, to, to stake Margaret if we if we play within the next week, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the nice thing about Christina is you can go look at her Facebook page, and she has her schedule posted where um, where she can give lessons, right? Because you're doing a lot of lessons, right? Yeah, yeah. So anybody out there, if you're going to be where Christina's going to be, um, you can hit her up for lessons. Uh, you did one, what was it, maybe Thursday here? Um, over yep. here on the big yep. table? I watched her give lessons to uh, somebody and she's very, very good at what she does. And you can't get, you can't, you can't get anybody else who's, who's gonna be able to do it like Christina does because she really breaks it down for you. So if, yeah, if you're interested I've in lessons. Lesson from her, she showed me some stuff and, and yeah, she's very technical and her and her dad created some really good systems that are awesome. She was sitting over here behind my booth uh, working, uh, setting up uh, drills, I think on her phone. So she's very dedicated to giving lessons. If you're anywhere where she's going to be, you need to reach out to her and uh, get some lessons from her. It, it'll help your game a lot. Yeah, you guys giving me a blush. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah, I'll tell you what, you got a nice, you, tell, tell the fans about your video that you created, Christine, you spent a ton of time on it, maybe yeah. some listeners out there are interested in it. Um, yeah, I just, a um, couple months ago, I launched my training program, which uh, me and my dad was creating for uh, a long, long time, like half a year, we've been working on the script, and then it took a while to film everything, to edit everything, and it was a lot of stress, but I'm so happy. So basically, everything I cover in my lessons, all about fundamentals, speed control, not related on the feelings only, but the actual system that you can use um, to help your game, basically, and be able to rely on something, especially in a stress situation. That's what you see a lot of people might play really good on practicing or when they feel, when they catch the gear. But what happens when they're off 
uh, mentally or physically, they completely fell apart and, you know, it has to be a lot with your fundamentals and that everything uh, is only based on your feelings that's already inconsistent because feelings are inconsistent. So uh, I was really happy to, uh, you know, figure out the exact, um, like, not, not a plan, but you know, exact image you can get, what you have to do, what you have to work on to be able to really go on to the next level. Because most of the time people hit plateau and they cannot develop their game. They play many, many years and they don't understand what's going on, why they keep missing even after playing 30 years. Right, so it always has to be with your fundamentals. And so you're telling me that you've, you've created a program that's going to work on the mental game and when you're in a stressful game situation, you've, yeah. you've created that? Yeah, it's like uh, if you think about uh, anything you do in life, you have to focus on the process instead of the result. It's easy as that and a lot of people, players, forgetting about that, focusing too much on I want to win, I want to play good. Right, and it's it's impossible to control. It's not up to you win or lose because it also requires your opponent game, right? So, a lot of people forgetting to focusing on something that you know that will help them to to win. Yeah, setting because up they're a, trying to win. Yeah, you know? it's it's all about the process. So, yeah. where do I send my money to? How do I get a hold of this? Because this yeah. sounds like something I need. Yeah. So it's it's basically pool. I always say that pool is you know, very connected to your mental game because it's at least 50%, right? You might play good and the next day you play terrible and it's not not that you forgot how to play pool over the night, right? It always has to be with your mental side. So when uh, in my training program, I connect this to a thing and saying, hey, you do this, 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 and it's not only going to help you to make the balls, but also it will help you in mental game in a stressful situation because, you know, exactly what you have to do. I have to step into the line, I have to do this, this, this. And then you're occupying your brain with all this information that you, you know, controlling. So if you think about, uh, I don't know, people with ADHD and PTSD, they do something physically to help them mentally, right? Or you feel Absolutely. bad, you go to work out, you eat, you drink, whatever you do, you do something physically that helps you mentally. So why wouldn't we take the same approach that was already created, it's all in psychology books, and put it on a pool, on a pool table and use that. That's, that's awesome. So when will this be available? Are you still working on it? Is it finished? Yeah, it is finished. I released it like uh, two months ago or something. Really? And yeah. so how, how would somebody get a hold of this? So it's on uh, my website. So people just uh, launching the program and get uh, access with lifetime um, lifetime access, basically. Uh, so they can go back and watch yeah. it over and over. It's not a one-time no. purchase. It's like having basically like a DVD. Yes. You can use yes. it as many times as you exactly. want. What, what website is it? Uh, ChristinaTakach.com. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So ChristinaTakach.com is where you can get that. And, uh, yeah. uh, and uh, why I like that because it's sep separated. So let's say we talk about stroke, right? And it's separated from your stance. It's separated from your speed control, right? It's not like one full video for two hours where you have to look for the right moment uh, to rewatch certain things. It's all separated. and. So if you're struggling with a specific yeah. thing, you can go in and rewatch that portion. Exactly. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. Thank you, Christina. That's sure. It's pretty insightful, guys. If you're listening, ChristinaTakach.com. <coughs> um, if you're interested in that system, and I know I am, uh, make sure you go check that out. Meanwhile, it looks like Fetter might might be getting out here. Gonna tie it up. Yeah, Fetter made, made an unbelievable out, and I definitely think that he was trusting the process there and what Christine was talking about. It's just so important. And it's what has allowed her and Fetter both to get to the top of the ranks in pool is, is trusting the process and forgetting about everything else because there's so many situations in pool where the lights are bright and they are stressful. And we, we see so many players that are awesome when they're practicing and they dog it under the heat or under the pressure. And exactly what Christina just did. Pocket banks, I don't know, eight ball last pocket. But compared to European, they can really compete consistently because of the execution, right? So 
So the, the Europeans have almost perfected the fundamental yeah. side of it. And um, here in the U.S., our players have a little bit more versatile um, like games the out flow. there. Yeah, yeah they, they, they can learn one pocket and banks and all these different um, – because you guys don't really play one pocket, or do y'all yeah. play banks over there? Not really. Yeah, so so different games um, have maybe allowed the United States players to learn shots and stuff like that. But as far as fundamentals, I do think we're behind. I yeah. mean, it's it's. And this is the reason why the gap is big. This yeah. is the only reason, honestly, because you have to be able, as Jason said, rely. Uh, on your uh, abilities, rely on your hand. You want to, you know, make sure it's shooting straight. And this is what a lot of people struggling with is a consistency as well. So if you think about any other sport, when kids coming to, to do something, they learn the fundamentals first and then they grow the knowledge and grow other stuff. But fundamentals is one of the most important thing. And most of professional pool players I know, uh, I don't know, like Nils Fine and, you know, all top players, they keep working on their stroke every single day. They keep doing this 90x drill, shooting straight ball in for hours. They want to make sure that they can rely on a stressful situation on their fundamentals. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. Um, meanwhile, we got a tough situation here. Uh, Jason, Phil, what do you guys think yeah. about this? Phil got me all sidetracked, got me out here working <laughs> in the internet now. Uh, what yeah, I was going to say leave Jason alone right now. <laughs> <laughs> what are y'all stirring up? <laughs> what are y'all stirring up? No, I don't know. <laughs> Tony made a pretty interesting post, and I know Jason's probably all red in the face. <laughs> oh, man, you know what? It, it's it's fine, and, and it's... I love it. It's like it's boxing, a, man. It's like boxing, yeah. right? Promote, so whatever. It's it's all it's all good and fun, man. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's a matter. But I mean. Yeah, he's got uh, he's got Federer in a little bit of a pickle here. So, I mean, he, it's a big one ball. There's no doubt about it. But you just you know, the, it, it's tied up four four. So you don't want to just make a good hit. You you got to try to be smart here because. Shane could take the lead here if he if he just makes a good hit and leaves him leaves him an out. So tough one. But I'm thinking that nine can bounce off the rail, hit the five, and then go in in the side pocket. So Fedor could get rewarded here just by making a hit. Ooh. To thin. Okay. But all right, that worked out. But I think now it's pretty easy. Hook behind the two ball. Is it? Man, you gotta have great control. I can't get behind that two ball. I don't think that's tough. That's a pretty But I see, ball yeah, ball, just, I don't know, not for me. Yeah, that was easier, sure. So, could he see this, or is this just a little bit of a jump? All right, guys, I think Christina is going to uh, take a little hiatus and get ready for her uh, bar box matches. So, well, uh, thank you, guys, for having me. All right. See you soon, Christina. Good see luck. You. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Hey, go put, go punch Tony in the gut, would you? <laughs> that, I, I'm not sure she heard that comment, but uh. <laughs> then you do it, Steven. You're big enough. Um, I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's funny. No one cares. Let's see what we got here. He did go offensive with the one, huh? Did you all just see Fetter bank the one cross corner? Barely yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Just making sure that I was back where I needed to be there. You got me all sidetracked, Phil. <laughs> I 
guess he wasn't able to get on the two there. I'm not sure why he didn't go at that. I'm kind of surprised that he decided to play safe there, honestly. Yeah, I didn't think he was going to duck there either. I mean, it looked like the the one to the two. I mean, if he saw that, everyone else was playable. Now he's giving Fetter an opportunity to, to pocket a jump here and draw the cue ball and maintain position on the deuce. Definitely tough, but makeable and an opportunity that he could have not had had Shane gone offensive there. I'm really surprised. And not even close. Let's hope Fetter didn't get his bet down, huh? <laughs> I don't know if anybody bet him or not, did they? I don't I think, think so. In the D-Gen, I don't think so. I don't think it looked like Chip either. was, well, somebody, uh, Justin said he'd take a small sweat bet, but I don't know, I think. Yeah, I saw Chip come in, but yeah, Hank, Chip came Hank, in a little late. Yeah. Hank the Tank, just sitting around waiting to snag every bet. <laughs> Let's see here, this is a, you know, a long straight one ball. Probably gonna have to pull it back a little bit. Just above the five. Interested to see if the eight ball goes from where it sets or if he has to bump it. Either way, I think he'll be okay. The four is pretty available from the three, so if he needs to maneuver some, something with the three ball, he has the ability to, to open up the eight, nine if it does not go, so. But he landed pretty straight here, Phil. This, this yeah. could be a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, he's got a little angle to kind of punch it in. And, I mean, all he's really got to do is just clear to where he's past the four ball, right? Because is that the three ball on the side? Yeah. Yeah, that's so, the three ball on the side. So okay. if, the eight, if the eight doesn't go, then he may not be able to utilize the three to open it up. He may have to end up playing the six off the nine or something. <laughs> The eight ball does not go. Could potentially just go right in. It's just tough to tell from this angle, but it does not look like it goes. No, it does not go. So he's going to have to do something here with the, the eight nine. Opening that up so they'll play. He's a little nervous there, maybe getting a little bit too much of the cue ball, but nonetheless, came out perfect. Got very close to his work, so. See what he has drawn up here for the eight, nine. Now he's gonna open. I think he'll probably play the six, do it from the six ball, either play the six off the nine or use the six ball to go into one or the other. Thank you, Phil. You think he plays the six off the nine? Uh, yeah, I think that's the smart shot there, for sure. That's what he was looking at, is what angle he'd like to do that and be able to get position on the seven ball. This is the shot of the rack. Trying to take down the ninth rack here, and it was this was SVB's break. So I thought it will be breaking in our next rack. See if SVB can have some fortune here. Things could get goofy. Wow. wow. See, just wiped its feet on the way in, hit both points three times. Nice shot by Shane there. He wanted to use some pace there, though, you, you see, so it made the shot kind of missable because he wanted to use some pace to make sure that they got fully separated. Right. Handled very nicely there by SVB. We'll cruise into a 5-4 lead. 
And I tell you what, this race to the left is a long race, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Especially with this format, with no touch in the one, you don't see a lot of broken runs. Every rack kind of turns into a moving battle, or at least has the potential to. Well, and, and to me, Jason, this is just questioning a little bit, but you know, better did not sink the jump shot and gave SVB the opportunity to run out and he handled it. So, you know, interesting here, we're seeing Fetter switch his breakup. So he is going to the long rail. He's going away from the sellout break. He was trying to try to cut the one on the side. It got kicked in the corner. Is he going to have a shot on the deuce? It does not appear so. Yeah, no, he's, he's definitely going to be rolling out here and I, I don't know where he rolls out to, Jason. Maybe you have an idea on that. Well, you know, the, the good news is it does not look like it goes in the side, so it gives him a lot of options. Um, maybe looking to, to tie something up, extend the game here. Um, yeah, this, is a, there. this so is a tough If it one. goes past the eight, he, he, he's looking if it goes past the eight. Maybe maybe challenge challenge um, SVB to shoot here. He may just push out down to the short rail. You called it. And, That's and what he's doing. It when... And Shane's looking at it. Well, I don't think he's going to pass this back. I mean, I think he's going to have to take a crack at it. He just he just kind of gave really a little tough. smirk, and now he's coming to the table. Phil's awfully quiet over there. He must be stirring the big pot. <laughs> no, no, I was doing something else. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Shane's, uh, Shane just called the two in the corner. It's off camera, I couldn't really see, but uh, he called it in the corner. Yeah, that's what I, I figured he would probably challenge him with something offensive here, being that it's so tough. He's got to get it past the point on the side pocket, which is a challenge. And the eight balls there, and securing shape on the three is pretty natural. So you're gonna have to hit the top side of the cue ball with it being frozen to the rail. So a nice speed from Fetter, get the cue ball exactly where he wanted it. Well, that was a great shot and there. Hit it perfect, but still not out of the woods. Probably gonna have to utilize, maybe try to bump into the six here. He's maybe elevated over the eight. This is a, yeah, another a very challenging shot. shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very tough. This may be tougher than the last, actually. Especially if he's elevated over the eight, Phil, because if you try to, I mean, he may end up having to try to go, I don't think you want to try to go two rails. He's going to have to try to hold the cue ball some, some type of way. The good news is the nine ball does play with some of the backboard. If you were to hit the long rail first. Two ball underneath the nine ball, maybe? I mean, that's probably a safer shot. Well, the thing is, it's almost just as tough. I mean, at this range, I think Shane will probably be shooting. I'll see Shane be shooting here. He went two rails. He had to use a little bit of inside English to do it, but man, what a shot that was. That was exactly what I was thinking the, the offensive shot would be, would be to go ahead, because you don't like to baby that ball. You want to get through it, but then you got to use inside, which, you know, takes some deflection, and there's just a lot more to control with that range. I mean, that's unbelievable. He hit it dead in the center of the pocket at that range, jacked up with inside English to miss the six and went two rails to get to the four. I mean, so far, I'll be honest with you, that's the shot of the match for me. Uh, yeah. He made it look really simple, but that's as tough as it gets right there from SVB. And still not out of the woods. Going to have to power up at some range here to get back to the five. And handled perfectly again. SVB in great form today. seeing SVB's A game this far. Trying to extend his lead to six games and he will be breaking. So it's 
as the SVV cleans up these last five balls. They'll take a six to four lead and the break. It's a pretty nice little cushion whenever your opponent has had no luck on the break. Federer has really not had any success with his break shot so far in this match. Hasn't really missed any balls, has he, Phil? I think if I missed the one jump on the one ball, but outside of that, I can't think of any balls that he's missed. Right. Really? Yeah. Guess we'd be really forcing the action. Such a great offensive player. But really, I think his lead's... This, the difference in the lead so far has been his safety play. A smart safety in his last rack on the one ball for him in position. A couple of racks earlier, he played a safety on the six ball. Both have given him the rack. As he looks to pocket the 10 ball, it takes a six four lead. And he is breaking, right, Shane? SV, yeah, it's BB breaking. He won the lag, so he's breaking when the score is even. So John Moore, Warren Kiamco coming up next, and then the winner of this will play the winner of that uh, just shortly after that finishes. Nine balls. Meanwhile, still big, a little ways. big power break from SVB there. Deposited the wing balls, or made one of them at least. Yeah, he's Straight got a pretty, on the one. pretty wide open table here. That's not good for Federer. No, and really just securing position on the two ball. Everything else pretty straightforward here. He's going to have to manipulate it a little bit and come through a little bit of traffic. But definitely a big favor. You're just going to come one rail at it, I believe. Just come right back up. Looks like maybe drawing this ball is that straight to where you can be draw it right back. I was gonna go one rail up, that's what I thought. Just doesn't want to be jacked up and it's off to the races looking to claim the eleventh rack, extend his lead to three. Really it's the three to the four here. Outside of that they all play pretty easy. Yeah, Shane not very happy with the way that played out. Yeah, he got a little straight here, so he, he may, depending upon his angle, he may have to go two rails or it may just be drawn straight out of it. He played it well, went though. Two, went two rails the other way. Played underneath of it on the short side. I like that decision. Pretty daggone good there. what he did there. He just went ahead and come over to the other side of the table and allowing him to get through the four ball. Not trying to be cute, hold the cue ball or anything. It's one thing you'll notice at the elite level. A lot of these guys like to really strike the ball. They don't like the baby much. I can really get through the cue ball. Steven, that match is a 10 ball match, right? The Warren match? Correct. What's the score over there, Steven? No, it's it's going to happen after this match. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're down to the final three matches, and Warren and John will play uh, immediately after this is over. So um, still still some great pool left. Uh, we're, we're seeing an excellent match here, but there's still still more to come. So the winner of, the winner of this match will play the winner of Mora and Cor Warren, right? Correct. And that'll okay. be for the finals of the uh, 5K Posse. added Posse. 10 ball event. How much was the entry for this this 10 ball? 500. 500. Nice. Was it full field, full uh, 16. Is that what it was? No, it was, it was uh, 21 players. We they went for a 32 bracket and had some people uh, not able to make it. 
So we got 21 players in this event. Still pretty good, 21 players at a 500 entry. Plus 5,000 added, uh, plus the, the side pot. So I don't have all the numbers on it, but... Uh, so I, they, did, they did a side pot instead of the Calcutta? Uh, well, no, they had a players meeting. Um, unfortunately, that the, we were not able to do it inside the building. The, the owner is unaware of, of that taking place. Oh, okay. All right, SVB. Stenham is leading to three games. Seven to four is the score. Fetter to break. Uh, on the stream. Yeah, that's great. That's an interesting dynamic as well. John and John and Warren both play very, very consistent and very, very, uh, very deliberate in how they play. So it'll be a fun one. Yeah, I watched I watched Warren come to Dallas and play CJ. I forgot when he spotted him, but he played him on the hardest table probably in the country. Rusty's table uh, one. Oh my God, what and a made nightmare it look easy. table that is! And uh, man, did I see that guy play championship pool like I've never seen anybody play. He did everything phenomenal. He broke great. His safeties were insane. He ran out. I mean, it was unreal. So, so strong, man. He's got such a high gear, it's not even funny. Now, meanwhile, Fetter's selling out on another break. That's what I said. That's the problem with breaking from the middle when you can't touch the one is if you don't make a ball, if you don't fluke a ball in or you don't get a four railer, you sell that out and leave, leaving the one ball right, right in the corner. I think Fetter's trying to set up the action match. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, that's uh, the kind of the, well, I mean, I guess the alternate break format's okay in this with not being able to touch the one, but it just it, it apply it does apply pressure to you when you get down, you know, like you just can't make another mistake. There's definitely advantages and disadvantages to the alternate break um, format, but man, I tell you what, you get down seven to four in a race to 11, it is very tough if your opponent has the breakdown like SVB showed this far. He's been breaking pretty good, and he made the wing ball in his last two breaks, so. He cleans these up. Goes up eight to four, breaking the balls. Pretty tough to recover. Continues to play and break the way that he is. It's like he's gonna pull the four, pull the cue ball back off of the four and play the five on the side. That's what he was looking at. Be interesting to see how he gets shape on the six from there. He's going to get all the way underneath of it. So he did just go forward here. Like the six in the top right. I don't think we'll see him draw the ball because he could potentially run into the ten, but I could be wrong. He just went all, went all the way around the two rails. And really feels like he's one shot away here if the eight ball passes. Didn't look at it. So the six to the seven is no bargain. He's looking how he wants to get on it. So maybe the eight doesn't pass. Can you tell, Steven? Uh, no, I mean, yeah, no, not on this table. He was looking at he was looking at how he wanted to get on the seven ball to break it out. So it tells me that he doesn't think it goes either. Oh, and and I think he got there. Yeah, I did get there. I think he'll be able to bump into the nine and then push the eight a little bit. He just doesn't want to overdo it. Yeah, this is this is where these guys are just so good at hitting the right sides of the balls and coming out with a shot. The important part, I think, is, well, maybe he doesn't have to bump the eight also. I was going to say, I think he might need to bump the eight after he bumps the nine, but he may be able to bump the eight full or bump the nine full enough that uh, that he doesn't have to. We'll find out what he looking does here. Where, where to hit the nine ball. That's what he was looking at. He's going to try to hit a pretty full cool around. Yeah, okay. He's just going to play it in the side now, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good run out here from Shane. 
We've seen nothing but good run outs from Shane. He played perfect, perfect pool. Showing all facets of the game. Breaking well, playing good safeties. Rolling out good. Running out from everywhere. Hard shots, doesn't matter. We've, we've seen no chinks in his armor. He takes an eight to four lead here, breaking the balls. SP being involved you know whichever two can make it happen and Dennis is definitely thrown in there I think any match involving any of those guys is a, a, a would be a monster matchup so and I know Phil feels the same way about those four in particular I think that's that's the match that everybody wants to see yeah and and don't think if Dennis is is stuck out there that that's the last you're going to see Dennis from us because uh, Mike and I were already in talks trying to figure out where to where to go stream a match for Dennis somewhere Maybe not the Philippines, but to a place he can travel I thought we got lucky because we were real close To having Dennis and filler until I found out that he can't travel to Netherlands, which I thought he could with the visa uh, And we actually had a we actually had a location lined up until I found out the restriction for him that he couldn't get to there so we're we're trying to be creative too to keep bringing some really good matches. Omega TV yeah, looking to go international to, to make some Dennis Orcolo matches happen. Yeah, it's, awesome. it's always a possibility where Mike and I are a little crazy when it comes to, <laughs> well, we'll try to do things that others may not want to do just because we want to make sure that we're always bringing, you know, super strong matches out there for the fans. Well, that'd be awesome. You know, they have those, uh, those winner take all matches that they do over in the Philippines. You could you could go over there since Steven. Just got to figure out the internet situation, but you could have some nice matches. I saw that um, Al Katie was over there playing Dennis and, and won actually, right? Yeah. So. I'm not opposed to going to the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. I'm not taking my cues though. I'm trying to get robbed. Phil, so don't go. You won't come back, man. The, the, the taxi driver over there play better pool. I will say this, we're not involved and I'm not going to say who, but there is something coming up in the Philippines that's going to be pretty interesting. But um, not not by us, but I, I, I am excited to see what they're going to do. May not be like a traditional action match, but there could be something real fun coming up soon. All right, here we go. This is this is a challenge here. He's definitely taking a peek at the four ball to see the best place to get on it. So this is probably going to be the toughest layout rack that we've seen Shane have to maneuver. Well, we've seen him maneuver a couple pretty tough ones, and this is this is definitely not a bargain here. He threw to the four is tough, <clears throat> making the four and making sure that you maintain position on the five is going to be a challenge. And it doesn't look like the eight <clears throat> goes straight past the nine either. Can we get a look at the overhead? Yeah, no, it doesn't go. It, this so this is going to be a, a tough one. <clears throat> yeah, and, and we may seem put a, put some kind of bank on the eight ball. I actually hear me personally, and I've seen Shane do this a couple times. If he can't see an open shot, oh, he's going to call it. But he's actually, I think he's going to fire at three rails and just roll the cue ball up behind the five. He might actually be going for it, though. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Three rails, hold the five, and the four ball got a, a pretty good kiss there, so that's a good oh, shot. Yeah, it was perfect. Broke out the eight ball and got a snooker here. Shane does that shot so good, and I've seen him do it so many times. Um, being able to let that cue ball drift up like an inch and a half uh, while sending his object ball around the table. It's a really phenomenal shot. Is he going to jump this? No, he's putting the extension on. Okay.
Yeah, I think it's very nice shot by SVB there and just showing what he's so – just why he's such a great player. He just has so much firepower and he just can, can absolutely control every rack when he gets going like this. I mean, it, it's just – just an unstoppable force. It's almost like Shaquille O'Neal in his prime. You know, there's just nothing you can do but just sit there and watch the guy. Yeah, when he gets comfortable, man, it's tough. Yeah, and that's what we've seen so far in this match. I mean, this has just been all – this has been the SB, SBB show. Um, that's the tough, tough thing about pool. And we heard Christina talk about that. If, you, if you're just results-oriented, you know, and if you're, if you're fed or you could leave this and, and, and think that you played bad, but he really hasn't done anything wrong. You know, he's played played great pool. Um, missed a kick there, but I think he may have got fortunate. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. I'll, make the four. I'll, I'll be honest, Jason. I know how you feel, but I'm, I'm not officially sold that it's going to be 188 if they play 10 ball. Not, not yet, I'm not. You know, w watching him, to be honest, when he played Chang, I think he was probably a little up in the air just as much as I was on, on how that was going to go. And I think that was the match that he knew. He, that's the match. It, it was an important match for Shane. I talked to him a lot about that match prior and leading up to it and afterwards. And I think Chang has been... He, in Shane's mind, is the toughest opponent that he will ever play uh, when it play, when it comes to ten ball. I'm not saying that Federer is not there. I think we just we just need to keep seeing it, right? Um, so that I think that match with Shane was like that was the only match that he really wanted to get through to kind of prove that he is the best ten ball player. Uh, and I'm kind of with you to a degree. I just I don't know if I don't I don't know if I had to really put my money on it. I think I lean towards Shane a little bit if they're playing ten ball with the rules that we're all used to the way Shane plays. Yeah. I mean, like um, I said, it's still like proven said, otherwise. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I mean, I like I, I want to get it, you know, set it straight. I think that Shane is the type of player. I said it earlier, I don't think Feder will ever beat himself. I think, you know, obviously in a race to 11, he can beat himself. But in a race to 100, I don't think he's going to beat himself. Um, you're going to have to beat him. And there's only a few people on the earth that can go yeah. out and beat somebody. Yeah, like very Federer. few people. Let's, let's rephrase that. Very few people. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Filler. It's Chang. It's Shane. And, you know, Chang and rotation very seriously with his – Chinese eight ball contract. So when 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 that when that's done and he's back in there, I'm gonna love to see that rematch and love to watch him play Fedor and watch him play Shane and whoever else decides to get up there. I think Chang is an absolute monster, man. And it's funny oh, when yeah. I talk when I talk to to uh, to Mike Liang and Chang. Chang is so intimidated by Wu, it's not even funny. He just, he says, that is the best player I've ever seen ever play the game, and I could never beat him. Like, it's so funny how humble he is to Wu. And he says, that guy could not play for five months, and he gets on the table and just does things that leave my mouth to the floor. And I've never really seen Wu play that much. Yeah, Wu's an unbelievable, unbelievable player. But, you know, back to the match here, Phil. Uh, the same story, Fetters break, selling out to Shane, and Shane with a not the easiest of layouts here. The three to four could be some challenging. Um, let's see what else. They, we've been we've been seeing Shane solve all these racks, and a lot of them have been tough. Not a lot of road maps. His safety play has resulted in three racks where he's received ball in hand in all three. Look at this playing for the little window on the three, making the three to the four play easy. I'll tell you what, I'm not sure anybody wants to play Shane right now if he plays like this. <laughs> oh, and then the commentator's curse. <laughs> <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> nobody, nobody saw him missing that ball. Not you the did. way he's been playing in this match. You know, I was just about to say that this is the absolute best I've seen Shane play this weekend. He played Jeremy Seaman in what was essentially a very close match. And Shane's really been on it uh, in this match up until that shot. So thanks, Jason. <laughs> yeah, well, here we go. All right. 
right. This is just what the doctor ordered for the Russian. Nice open way out here on a break where he sold out again. Now he's going to need some fortune. He's going to need SVB to return the favor and give him a couple open racks. But more importantly, Fetter has to do something with his break if he's going to have an opportunity to win. He's been doing so far in the match is just sell out after every break. I think we will see Fetter switch off of the middle break and go to the long rail and try to cut the one on the side to where he can at least defend. And you know, Fetter's won a, a couple of the Predator events with the same format, and that's what he did. And he played three long act action matches with Alex with the same format, not allowed to touch the one. All balls have to be frozen. And he broke from the long rail. So a little surprised to see him kind of beating his head against the wall here. Sticking with the break on the middle. He went to the long rail one time. Came up dry. And then went right back to the middle. Looking to make it nine to four. SVB will be breaking. Racks on the rocks. 500 entry 10 ball, single elimination, 21 players started, we're down to four. Next match up will be Warren Kiamko versus John Mora. The winner of that will play the winner of this. It is single elimination, so no chance to come the scenic route. 5,000 added. Nice event here. What's nine the score I get? Scoreboard. Nine, nine to five. Okay. Change break, okay. I just gotta prove the Facebook wrong. <laughs> I'll give you four to one. I'll give you four to one. I got Shane. You're hundred to my. All right, no, let's pull the bet off. Just saying that you were winning is good. I don't want to bet against my. my <laughs> All right, no. Okay. I was gonna say you Jason's win. messenger was about no, to blow up. <laughs> no. <laughs> if, listen, if no, was, Sky, was, Sky, Sky's the only sensitive one. He's the one that gets sensitive. <laughs> Why did you come in on Shane's post and not on my post? That was his message to me the other day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. I don't give a shit. I tell you what, if you can offend me or embarrass me, you are a sick individual. I can promise you that. <laughs> if, you think that if you think that going out to Facebook and, and goating me by calling me a dick in a game that everybody knows I'm a big underdog in is going to make me put my money up, you got another thing coming. And listen, I, I, I never have um, I never have been offended when everybody tells me that I only put my money in good spots. I mean, that's that's uh, that to me. <laughs> I mean, to me, that is a compliment. Thank you for the compliment, yeah. Tony. I appreciate that. Some people call it a nit, and some people call it smart. But I'm here to make money, not lose money. So, whatever. Listen, if you think you're gonna goat me by calling me a nit because I won't let a guy that needs a ball play you even. Do whatever you got to do, buddy. You know, it doesn't matter to me. Um, you know, I mean, if that's the case, Tony, you're a nit for not playing Feather some even 10 ball. I mean, give me a break. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I can offend me one way or the other. Feather's not ready to play Tony one pocket. And if somebody wants a stake, you go ahead. They can do it. Nonetheless, though, Feather trying to. Get it right, this three is, racks. This, this you need a lot of good a lot of good control to get back here on this four ball. I don't even think he's gonna use a rail. I think he's gonna use the full ball here and just try to draw it out of there. And draw it straight back can, again. Yeah, I think that way he can um well he may he may not be with this reach, he may not be able to get enough power to do that. He may have to use the rail and he did. Very well done though. Does not want to get on the rail though. Yeah, he's okay. Yeah, he's all right. It wasn't ideal, but it's okay. And apply a little pressure here. We'll see. I'm interested. What do you think? You what do you think, um, Phil? You think he'll go to the to the long rail, or you think he'll stick with the middle break where he's been selling out? Man, I don't know. That's tough. I mean, yeah, that's a tough one here. Whatever I think if he loses, down, I think if he run, I think if he runs out here, I think he goes to the long rail. I think if he does not run out, he'll go to the he'll go to the middle of the table. That's right. my bet. Depends on if he's on tilt or not. If he cleans up these last five balls, I think he's going to switch his break. I think he has to. It's not about running out now. If you're fetter, it's not about breaking and running. It's about being able to defend and not sell out and force Shane to earn the rack. 
as opposed to just giving him a, a you know a tic tac toe. Mike, if you're out there, see what you stirred up, my man. Got it all <laughs> fired up, didn't he? Uh, the Don King of Pool World. Which, that's kind of what they told me sometimes. But and There you go. I don't know. I do wish... I do wish it was a little bit more... A little bit more like the boxing I feel like everybody tries to be a little a little too conservative and you know when well, you look at sports like boxing where they're the way that that it's promoted and the bickering and they in each other's face I like that I mean I think it needs like go out there and bark and don't worry about it I, I, yeah I like exactly it. I've always said know. that Sorry, uh, I've always said that the, the the best thing about the UFC is those little three minute promos that they do before the match. They're done in black and white, and they it's just a camera in the play in the faces uh, the the fighter's face, and uh, they're just kind of talking trash. I think that's one of the best part of it. That's the that's the promotion aspect of it, and I, I love that. Yeah. Yep, I agree. Now, if you're not that person, that's fine. But some of the people can bark and bicker back and forth. But they feel like they can't because it's not professional. But I don't know. I never yeah. really. Well, I mean, I I think it's I think a lot of people are pretty sensitive and soft about it. I'm like you. Who gives a crap? I mean, I think it's it's a lot different in boxing or UFC because I mean they literally fight. You know, it's, they're just all full of testosterone. That's just what they do. I mean, they fight, fight, fight. And pool, it doesn't. You know, they they don't really feel like they're you know boxing or something so it, it you know when I mean, you got the, the thing that i think it really kills it all is you have this whole like moscone cup feeling where people are teammates so you have all the europeans that could play each other but they don't because they could be teammates and it could it could affect the politics of making the moscone cup i mean give me a break same exact thing with these americans and you see these young Americans like Shane Wolford and Tyler and Chris Robinson or Chris Reinhold. All of them are they're they're like trying to match up with each other to prove that they're the one to get on the team to give themselves a shot. But once you get up there and you have an opportunity or you are on the team, a lot of them are like, "Oh no, we're teammates. We don't gamble each other." I mean, I don't even know what that means. There's like three days out of the whole entire year you might be teammates. So. Right. I, I think that that whole Moscone Cup is really, you know, it just creates a goofy environment for a lot of the action matches and pool. Um, but I love that. I love, like, Shane Wolford jumping up and, and trying to play. But, you know, it did, I, I say that, we did see Sky and, and Shane play each other, and it created yeah. a little animosity amongst them, you know, which I think is, you know, I think it's okay. I think it's good for pool. Yeah. Seeing the best players. You know, I mean, seeing the best, it's, you know, you see people in, in UFC out of the same gyms fight each other. Opportunity to get paid in a match that everybody wants to see, let them do it. Just SVB missing again here. Yeah. Did he get away with it? Yeah, I, I mean, I think Federer can go to the, uh, go to the rail. Yeah, I think he's going to have to go to the short rail first if he's going to try to get position on the three. We'll see if it's available here. But yeah, after all, I love what you guys are doing at Omega TV, really mixing it up, trying to get more action matches going, covering some tournaments. These tournaments are fun, but they're, they're nothing like a, a good day, three day, one pocket match, or a Chang versus Shane, or, you know, Feather versus DeLuna, or Feather versus Roberto, Sky versus Shane, all these matches that are happening. I mean, that's that's what we all want to see. Yep. Chip versus Feather, that's going to be a good one. What's your prediction there, Phil? i got to know. Oh, God. Uh, 
Shit. It's kind of like, I don't know, I guess I was proved wrong. I kind of felt like Scott was going to win when they played because of the moving. I kind of fell into everybody else's little moving trap. Um, ah, man, I honestly can't give you an answer, and it's not because I don't want to either. So, um, you know, it's funny. I watched Chip's comment yesterday when he said, yeah, well, everybody in the country or world is betting on Federer, so they all think Federer is going to win because... He's just such a strong player in every aspect of what he does. Um, I honestly don't know, man. I really, really, really don't know. Like, if you put a gun to my head, I'd probably just let you pull the trigger because I just I'm lost. I really. Well, am. I'll tell you what, Shane may let you put a gun to his head and pull the trigger too. Right after that, <laughs> luck, safety from S from better there, and he's not yeah. only not only is he snookered, but he's he's high or he's tree topped over top of the seven here, so. He's going to kick with a little bit of inside English hair. Pretty tough to get separation and not sell out. He made it a little funny, though, Phil. Not sure he can make the ball. Let's see if we can get that overhead there, Steven. Um, he may be able to slice the ball, but he's going to lose his cue ball. Actually, I'm I'm looking down the barrel. I think he'll be able to use the five as a as a policeman to stop all the traffic, stop his cue ball, or the eight. I guess. Uh oh. Yeah. Well, I'm not out of the woods yet. Let's see if we can get that overhead again, there, Stephen. See if we can take a look at it. Jason, I've been I've been thinking. I think I want to. I think I want to, by a, by a hair, I want to favor Chip in that match. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I, I really because, do. I because mean, he's I, a gambler, because he's smart, because he's patient, because he doesn't really ever try to get out of line and do things that he may not do better than Fedor or better than Tony, or I just feel like he's a smarter player. Um and just plays conservative and I like that and he's got that heart and he's got that grind and he bets his own it makes me want to favor Chip yeah no, I, th I mean I think you're right I mean I know I'm being labeled as a mid but I, I really do think that's as, as gambling of a match as it could get and I do think I have slightly, but, slightly the worst of it I, I really do I, I, think that, I think that Chip's a favorite the match I'm, now listen I'm, I'm going to say something because I did have a conversation with Omega and Mike about this about two days ago and I'm going to say something that doesn't that you make that, that you we clearly know you don't agree with the only reason why I think Fedor could hang with Tony if they ever did play even is because of this if Tony plays his aggressive game and goes for the stuff that he goes for sometimes with Chip, I think Fetter's going to torture him. But if Tony is on and everything is working with the stuff that he does do, which is crazy and works out, then Fetter has no chance. So I think I think it could. It really just depends on what Tony shows up. If that stuff that he goes for happen, you know, works out, then yeah, he Fetter's got no chance whatsoever and you're you're right, he needs a ball or maybe even more at that point. But if if the yeah, stuff he's, don't go his way then 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 Fetter could could really capitalize on it. I so that's why I'm that's why I'm tossed on that match. I just I think Tony plays that way against Chip because he knows it's not gonna cost him the full rack. I think he play it different against Fetter. Yeah, I think I, I could I could agree with that. I, I see that. And I think Tony would would smarten up if he ever did play Federer, knowing that he can't do that that stuff. But sometimes yeah, Tony's just me. used to playing that way. Yeah, no, I, I mean I agree. I think it's definitely. I don't think it's that at all. I don't think Federer getting eight to seven is is gambling with Tony. I think playing Chip even is. Hey, we got slight the worst of it, but nonetheless, I'm glad you canceled my four to one bet because Federer's storming back here, looking to cut it within two. Oh God, scared me. man. I'm telling you, here we go. Man. Nine to yeah. seven is the score. I think SVB gets the break, right? Yeah, you're serving him up a nice rack here, like he has done for Shane so far. So, see if Shane sticks with the power here. He's looking to deposit the five and the nine on the sides, and both of them, the nine ball hit both points. And he's and got I a shot dry. on one. I think it's dry as a bone, and he sold out. Uh oh. Yep. Oh boy, we Fetter's got, a got an opportunity here. Man, I'm glad Phil was in a good mood today and let me off the hook. 
So now I can root for Fetter. There you go, nine to seven. If he takes these 10 balls down, it'll be nine to eight and it will be Fetter's break. So let's look through the rack here and see if there's any types of problems. I, sacri I sacrificed 400 for friendship. There you go. You saw it, Scott. Unbelievable. Well, Sky would have a different comment for me. That, that. <laughs> oh, man. All right, here we go. The one to the two is easy lane there. And the two does pass the five, so he's okay there. Really getting on the three ball uh, to get to the four here. This is the real challenge. The two to the three is the biggest challenge in the rack here. So we'll see how he handles it. We'll see if he plays for the, the gap between the seven, eight, or if he comes over here to the same long rail to the right side that he's standing at now. It's going to determine how he plays it. I'm, I'm thinking he's going to play over here to the long rail on the right side because there's no traffic, and it's going to be tough for him to get snookered. If he tries to play for the keyhole, he could go shorter long and end up with no shot at all. And he just went ahead and went in between that. He's still not out of the woods. He's got a lot of work to do here. He's got to swing the cue ball two rails. I'm trying to avoid all traffic. I think he can go between the 6-8 based on the angle that he has here. Somebody's running the vacuum. What are you doing, what are you doing over there, Phil? Clean it up. I was straightening something up. What do you think here, Phil? You think he just goes two rails or yeah. between the six eight? He may even I mean, go around the table and go three rails. Yeah, it could go under, but yeah, three rails and go under the four. I like that. No risk. We're going to accept a little tougher shot up the rail here. It's okay now. Right back where he needs to be. away here. Put that ball very pure. Alright, the last shot here for Fetter. It does look like he's got to get good on the six ball so he can get a good look at the seven. So I think he'll just try to play to the middle of the table here. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of a tougher shot on the six and not try to get cute just to guarantee that he has a look. That. And then likely you're going to play the seven in the same hole as the six. This wasn't the easiest of outs, though, Phil. No. We've seen some, some pretty tricky layouts for both players. Everything was in the open, but just some traffic to maneuver through. to see what Fetter does with the break in this next rack after he cleans up the last four balls. There's a $500 entry. 21 players showed up down to the final four. This will play the winner of our next match, which is Warren Kiamko versus John Mora. 
is a race to 11, alternate break, 10 ball, 5,000 added by Racks and the Rocks. Brought to you by Omega TV. Key sponsors are Acme and Simona's Cloth, Diamond Q, Diamond Pool Tables, Airmen, Yuchi, Off the Rail, Digital Pool. Hey, and uh, Jason, uh, versus Fetter Gorst. So, just a heads up on that for all you uh, pay-per-view customers out there. We will be going from that match to the Junior Norris, which will then, we will be streaming their one pocket event. I think it's 10,000 added, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Um, so that, that I think starts, Chip and Federer is the fourth, fifth and sixth, which is Thursday, Friday and Saturday. And then Sunday, I think they do the Calcutta and then it kicks off on Monday. So we'll be streaming the one pocket match for the Junior Norris. And then we'll be picking up some nine ball and 10 ball rotation matches towards the end of that week so you have potentially 10 days of non-stop action we are off offering a combo pass so for an extra 10 bucks you'll get the full seven days of the junior norris uh which we think is a good deal for you guys well you'll have the option to just purchase yeah just to just purchase the one pocket for our regular rates and then if you want the combo package for the 10 days of full action um you will get you'll have that option for just an extra 10 bucks. Oh, that's, uh, that's and awesome. Just everybody goes, if there is some confusion on these tournament, on these tournaments that we stream, we can't do the, the re-loop. There's just, there's way too many hours of pool and too many files and, and having to break them down and put them all up there. It's, it's next to impossible for us to do. Um, it's not a money thing or anything. It just has to do with, you know, sometimes Steven's getting there to stream these matches at 10 in the morning and then they go until two, three, four in the morning and we have to keep resetting the stream. So there's just too many files, too many passes, too many packages, uh, and it makes it complicated. The action matches, we will always do the reloops for you, but when it comes down to the tournaments, it's just almost impossible to do. Well, meanwhile, back at our match here, Fetter did go to the long rail instead of breaking from the middle and uh, did not make a ball, but was able to secure a safety after the first inning and has been rewarded with ball in hand, and it is an ugly layout, though. See what it looks like. The three ball is going to be a challenge. It's probably going to have to play it in the bottom left, and then how do you get on the four from the three? That's going to determine the rack right there. How do you go from the three to the four? Phil, what do you think? Man, I don't know. That's a tough one there. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Well, I don't have the answer. If the three passes the nine, he could always go from the two to the three and play the three in the bottom right and follow it up for the four in the bottom left. Correct. If, if he's got to shoot the passes. two, he's got to shoot the two in the side. He's got a problem. Oh, he just went ahead and went into the three and broke it out. Okay, nice there. That's one way to do it. Just go ahead and take care of your problem early. Well, you don't have to get cute on position play. And I think he's got the perfect angle to come right up for the three here. And the four, it does look like it is a, the four is available in both corner pockets. So. Or no, I'm sorry, it's not. The nine ball's there. Let's go back. Yeah, no, the nine ball's got the uh, four so ball. So he's got play in the bottom left? Correct. Yeah, so he, he can... He can really just get a little bit above the three, a little bit closer to the middle of the table. That way he can just kind of crawl the cue ball up the long rail and play it. The good news is he doesn't have to do much because the five's laying over the side pocket. So the four to the five will be pretty simple. All right, so this tells me that he's going to go two rails around. I'm not really in love with this path. I'm kind of surprised he didn't decide to just go ahead and go out and get above the three a little bit. Uh, kind of feels like he could hit the eight ball here. Let's see if we can get a look at the overhead, Steven. It's three eight, looks like. Oh, no, he's okay. I think he will have to stun though to meet to beat it. Let's 
is the shot of the rack. Just went ahead and drew out of there. Couldn't have put it any better with his hand, ball in hand, could he have, Phil? Federer's break? No, Federer just got on the um, on the four ball, which was we felt like was solving the rack, so. That was it, Federer's, Federer's break next rack. Oh, no, it'll be Shane's, Shane's, um, I think it's Shane's, yeah. Yeah, yeah Shane, it'll be Shane's, Federer, Federer broke here. Yeah, Federer broke here. Uh, Shane tried to play a safety on the one ball and gave Federer just a piece of it. He's going to draw out of this one as well, just one round out. And he's still got to get on this six ball. This was not the easiest of racks. We've seen a lot of really tough layouts. Not a ton of clusters, but just little goofy spots where you got to get good on the six to play in the top left here. Yeah, perfect. Definitely expect him to clean up the final five here. Tie this bad boy up. I'm really glad you didn't take the four to one. <laughs> I think the tank would have busted me on that one. Oh, yeah. Looks like we're gonna race the two, Phil. It's a big pay, big pay difference, I think, right? Do we have I the payouts available? Yet. Yeah, I didn't see it yet. You don't have to have the payouts around, do you? Steven, I'm taking a look at that. Yeah, I'm looking to see where, where we can find them. The digital pool sometimes has them. Okay. What were you looking for, Jason? The payouts. the payouts. Yeah, so what's on Digital Pool is going to be really close to what it actually is. Um, they just made some adjustments to kind of round them out. Round them out. All right, I'm going out there now to see if I can get it and let everybody know. I'm pulling it up. Okay. So it looks like first place is 6,400, second is 3,360, third place 2,000, fifth is 840. And then we'll be getting coverage of uh, a few of the other events as well, what we can. Gonna be a fun one. It's, it's uh, that Junior Norris tournament is two full, or uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, two full weeks of pool basically. When you tack on uh, Chip and Fetter, um, you know, it's, it's, Roughly like 17 days, I think. So, gonna be oh, a fun really one. No, no, no. It's 10 days for the tournament. She, she's a week long, and Feder and Chip is three days long. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm looking at my schedule. I'm looking at my schedule because I get there two days early. Uh, nice, nice break from SVB here. He's looking at just taking his medicine on the deuce, not trying anything cute. He's really close to the one ball here, and he's jacked up. So it looks like he's just going to bounce off the rail and take some some range or some distance on the deuce. He went ahead and went all out there. Got very close to his work. Pretty open rack here. You're an SVB fan. You got to be happy here. Opportunity to get to the hill first, and we'll have another chance to break. See advantage of winning the lag, so important. We see it all the time in the Moscone Cup. The lag is the utmost importance, especially in the alternate break format. It looked like it wasn't going to matter, didn't it, Phil? It didn't look like it mattered. He was going to re-break it on the hill. And not sure yeah. what happened, but all of a sudden we got a tie ball game here. A couple unforced errors about SVB. Oh, Alan Federer Gorse back in the match. It will not matter if he's able to clean this rack up and hold serve. Yeah, I think he got absolutely perfect here where he can just snatch his ball right back and not even flirt with the seven at all.
And perfect speed control from SVB. It's five balls away from getting to the hill. Federgorst will have the break on the next rack. If it goes hill hill, Shane will be breaking. Tell you what, a lot of back and forth in this match. It has been a great, great one to watch. And we got a little wolfing down in the middle of it. <laughs> beat that. Tony, bring uh, Stephen, bring Tony on the stream, please. <laughs> Are you, <laughs> Are you serious? Are you serious? That's funny. I mean, I will. He's right here. No, we don't want. We don't want all that. You, you all want to sell another pay per view if you get me and Tony in here working in the middle of a ten ball match. Bring him on at the end of the match. <laughs> oh, okay. Get the, get the popcorn out. Huh? I, I, I got to tell you guys, my AirPods are about to die. Because <laughs> both of you guys are good shit like talkers. <laughs> oh, yeah. We definitely do it with the best. He said he deleted his post. He didn't. He, I said, man, you know, he, he said he didn't want to offend me. He's not going to offend me. Oh, man. There we go. SVB putting the 10 ball every break you're not making the wing balls so just get on back over here and, and plug some pull let's see when he is doing that he, it's the second time he's had success with getting a one ball kick but no reward no shot on the deuce he's going to have to roll out here pretty ugly rack in the middle not sure what he's going to do here Looking to see what potentially he could do. I think it doesn't really matter. The game's going to be extended no matter what. But always at a big disadvantage when you have to push. Your opponent coming in has the option to either shoot or allow you to go back to the table so you can't do anything too bad. And Fetter's last push, she did allow her challenge at SBB to shoot and SVB knocked it down and ran out. So, see if he takes a different approach. I don't think he's gonna be pushing to anything offensive here and the next the next person to the table is probably gonna be kicking. Yeah. So, you know, if you're fed here, you're looking to tie something up, just give yourself an opportunity to get back to the table. Any other trip back to the table is a good one. We'll see. I don't really. I mean, I don't see anything good here, Phil. This is this is pretty gross. Maybe push to a jump bank. Maybe just roll into the eight as long as a seven ball. Possible. I mean, do you do you want to bet the set on it? I don't know. I think he's actually rolling up, kind of like behind the ten ball, but not behind it, uh, where Shane can see the two but can't really do much with it, so kind of a challenge. And he's just gonna give it right he, back. I was gonna say, he's getting this, he's getting this back immediately. I'm kind of surprised he didn't push to the jump bank, honestly. I'll see what he has drawn up here. He definitely has something in mind. That's one thing you'll notice. Players push out, they're always have something in mind. They hope they see something that their opponent doesn't. I'll tell you what, I'm not sure I see it here. This is pretty difficult to go anywhere. He's looking at, is he looking at banking the, th the two ball three rails? I actually think he, it, the shot we were talking about before with Shane, I think he's gonna try and punch the two three rails and hold his cue ball behind the the stack there the four six nine seven now he's playing it with top yeah. i don't know this is tough yeah i think he's going to the end rail with him trying to go three rails in between seven nine well oh. that's not bad actually pretty good and he's it was easy to lose from there i think he'll get a return to safety here 
one definitely is going to get that. But nothing offensive here. And the 4 6 got buggered up. It's tough to tell if the 4 passes the 5. If not, I don't see a pocket available for the 4. From my view, the 4 does pass the 5. It's, uh, it's just from really the camera tight. Here, it doesn't, yeah, yeah, it's just from the really camera here, tight. does not appear to. SVB's not going to love this, I don't think. I don't think he got the snooker. I think Federer can see the edge of the ball here. If not, definitely has, a, has the ability to play a jump safe here. You may see a few innings back and forth on this. That's for sure. He's calling the side just in case. Yeah, what more could you want for such a tight match? I mean, I, I love watching the break and runs, but watching a, a, a good safety battle near the end of a, a tough match is always rewarding for me. Tells me he's gonna probably hit a little thin there. Oh, oh, oh no, he got there, I think. Oh, I don't know. I can't see from my I, angle, I, and I can't quite tell. I think the shot's the available. I think, I think the shot's available, Steve. I think you might be I right, the way Shane's looking at it. I think the shot is available, and I think that he can maintain position on the three. I'm not saying it's easy, but I do think, I do think that the two ball does pocket from here. And if it does, you just got to figure out a plan for the four. I'm sure there is one, probably another safety. And I'd be worth taking a risk at shooting here, especially if you got to jack up and swerve the ball. Well, I can tell you, we, we got the match on uh, multiple, multiple TVs in Racks on the Rocks, and there is a bar full of 160 players <laughs> sweating what's going on here. I mean, the, the bar is lined up with people looking up at the TVs. It's great. I think he was, I think he was kind of just looking at what the, maybe what the jump would look like. He may have to swerve the ball or do something here. He maybe a tad bit snookered on the two, but Either way, he definitely can see the top side of it. I think he called the pocket. He did. He just called he is, the pocket. This tells me he does have to swerve a little bit with him elevating like this. And he missed the ball and does not want to break out the four. I believe the four does pass the six to go in the corner pocket now. It does. See if we can get a look at the overhead. See what kind of angle he's got on this three. Yeah. You may have to bank this ball. Actually, I'm I'm sorry, Jason. I was wrong. Uh, that four ball is real, real tight there. I I don't know if it passes anymore. The first time I looked at it, I thought it looked good. Now, from this angle, I'm seeing that it's really, really tight. Yeah. And the fact that he went and looked at it from the second vantage point tells me it's super tight as well. But I think he's looking at position to play safe on it. So we're going to see him potentially do something offensive. Well, maybe he was looking at the angle for a break out there. That's what he was just lining up. He's... Now he's looking at a path if he cuts the three, where his cue ball's gonna go. I kinda like just ducking here. Just go ahead and duck here. And try to maybe do something devastating and get to the back of the 10 or something. Yeah, and, and the safety option is not extremely difficult. Um, some stuff can go wrong, but the, the, the execution of the shot is, is not extremely difficult, I don't think. Not for Fetter, at least. I think he's. I think he's looking at banking and getting on the four. 
The one thing is, I can always promise you this, if there's something offensive out there, all of the elite players are looking for it. They're looking for an opportunity to stay at the table. Because if not, you're, you're banking on your opponent missing a kick or you're banking on your opponent, you know, giving the table back, and it doesn't always happen. So if you have an opportunity to keep the table at this level, often that's the choice. And he was able to cut the ball, break the four out. Wow. Put that on the highlight reel. What a shot there. What excellent control. Already that done. That was sweet. Wow. Wow. Let's Play on again for us. Yep. It amazes me how he can just creep those balls in with a, with a thin cut like that. Me and Josh were talking about that last week. And to have so much control off of thin cuts like that. It's just amazing to watch. Well, that's the shot of the match there, especially if they, if if Fetter's able to, to get out and and have an opportunity at the hill hill. And you know, obviously, he had to take it had to take a little chance there. Um, it wasn't guaranteed. It wasn't a foregone conclusion that just because he ran into those balls that he was going to have a shot. But um, you know, he gave himself an opportunity to go into the balls, go into the right, the balls the right way, and come out with a shot. And he did just that. He got a little fortunate. But sometimes whenever you're crashing into balls, that's what it that's what it takes. And you gotta be brave and go for it. If it's a calculated risk. So looking like we're gonna have a hill hill thriller here. As long as he can maneuver the last six balls. I think he's gonna go ahead and go up and down here one rail. So I can get through the ball. And he did. Now it's just all about the seven to the eight. Went ahead and got straight here so he can just draw the cue ball back. I think he went, he went that way instead of trying to get a little lower and using the long rail so he wasn't treetop on the eight. This path took that out. And he sunk it. Three balls away from Hill Hill. SVB will be breaking the balls. has definitely lived up to all the hype. Well, and, and you can't ask for anything. They both played excellent. You know, Fetter struggled with the break. And, and Shane had played very, very well at the beginning of the match and had a couple missed, a oh. couple missed opportunities. But okay, we got a ball. All in all, it's played pretty good. And not a great shot on the one ball. Oh man, this oh. is not a run out rack. Well, that's great. We wanted some suspense. So yeah. Here we go. I think one we're going to get it. rack here. I guess my question is, can you play a two-way here? You play, you go top follow, you play the bank, and then you come straight back up to play the two in the same corner, and if you miss the one, it's kind of like a two-way shot. Yeah, I don't know if he has the options of doing that. I think he's going to take the cue ball around two rails and try to put it down here on the short rail that we're looking at. This thing that's in the right side of the one and come in between the four six. Shane does I those thin shots really well. Yeah, he's, he's looking right now where the one's going to go, and that's the key. I mean, there is a window there. He's got to be a little careful. If he hits the window in between the 8 9 and he gets a little thick on the one, then it, it could lay on the long rail. So we may see him go the opposite direction. But I think we're going to see him bring the cue ball down here in between the 8 and the 4 6, just like this. And handled perfectly, I believe. Did he come a little short? Does he have a window? No, I'm I'm staring right down the barrel. It's directly in front of my booth. He might be able to just super super thin the one, but I, I really don't think so. He I super mean, thins the one, then he's got a shot. 
I, 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 don't, I don't know. Yeah, he, he, he may be able to shoot at this ball. That's what I'm saying. Let I, me it, adjust it's tough to tell on the camera. But, I mean, if there's something offensive here, I definitely think you're going to see him swing at it. But no. how does he get position on the two? Well, that's the key. Is there any future in it if he does shoot? And that's, that's going to be the portion that weighs into his decision because just shooting at the ball with no opportunity to play the deuce. He's going to he have to it. swerve. He's going to have to swerve. I just got down real low and looked at it. He's going to have to get a little spin on this ball. He can't see it straight forward. Oh, this, is, this is no bargain swerving at this kind of range. So... It almost appears that he can just see the right side of that ball. The way that he's lining up over the ball. And he's kicking the stick. Well, nonetheless, he left Shane long and strong here. Is a, can we get the overhead? Does the three ball cover up part of the bottom pocket there? I don't think so. A, no, I think it does not appear so. And how does he maintain position on the deuce? Oh, he's got to stun it over. It's not a not an easy shot. This is a tough shot, but I mean he's got he's got a window there for the two ball. So for the side or the corner, if he stuns it over, he's just got to make sure he, he comes out past that nine ball. Seam drawing it here. One rail in between the eight nine. Seeing big guy on the cue ball, which is going to make the shot a little bit more difficult at this kind of range, hitting down with the cue ball like this. And like Phil said, he's going to have to use a lot of pace to get back out above the nine. And he missed it. But here we are, Federer Doors with. Does have a bank available, but how do you secure position on the two? It's like he's under the ball, so the cue ball is going to be going above the two. Yeah, that's a tough shot here. I don't think the two nine combo plays. I think the eight's in the way. Not sure he has anything offensive here, Phil. We may be all defensive here. Not sure there's any future in banking this ball. Maybe you just try to chop this ball and maybe try to work the cue ball under the three some type of way. Under the three, and he did. Very nice shot by Fetter Doors. Yeah, that's that's that could be the the key shot right there, man. That's a that's a good shot. And that's jail. That is absolute yeah, that's, jail too. He's gonna have to get two rails. He, he, he's either gonna have to elevate and swerve um, if he wants to kick to the right here. See if we can get back to the overhead there, Steven, and see what. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think he can swerve. Uh, no, it, it almost, uh, he's looks in trouble. To, it almost looks to me like he needs to go top rail, side rail, um, around the four ball. I think that's what he's looking at there. What a hard shot. Yeah, it's very difficult. Uh, yeah, what I think that was, that was game, game over in my opinion. Let me see what he's looking at here. Shot. He's, he's looking at kicking to the long rail. Oh, God. Yeah, that, that tells you right there. He's looking at a Z kick that it's very difficult. Yeah, that was pretty devastating. Fetter got a nice little rub on the three ball last second there and, and really took away a lot of the cutting or the kicking options for SBB. So you can't really hit this too hard or it doesn't bend down towards the one. This is, I don't like this shot. No, man, neither did he. Ball in hand for Fetter Gorst on the hill. Can he clean him up? He's got some traffic, the one to the two. 
not the easiest, but he's got ball in hand. Let's see, let's we'll see where else he's connecting the dots here. The um, two to the three, it's okay. Three that would have been four. a nice year today, I'll tell you that. Man, you could have hey, nice. sold a car today, Phil. Oh, <laughs> and uh, Shane, Shane feels a little defeated. He already took off his glove. Uh, brutal, yeah, brutal well, safety by Fetter. Yeah, it's not over though. Nah, it's not looking good. Yeah, and I like what he did there. The angle that he got on the two to play in the side, so he can just go ahead and go out here. He can either go down to the end rail or he can just kind of float above the three, either one, whichever one he prefers. side or anything. I mean, he's just going to try to bring the cue ball back to where he's at right now. Just follow it up one rail. Does not want to get tree topped here. Does not want to get tree topped. I think he's okay. But still, he came a little far there. He, he didn't want to have to work the cue ball any kind of way. He would have liked to just pulled it over. I think he still can, but got a little much on the cue ball. Yeah, looks like recover there was easily here. Ain't gonna cost him. Looks like what? A couple of those mistakes he made at the end of the match is gonna cost him. Yeah. That way. This is an awkward bridge, though. That's what I was saying. Like, it, 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 he's not tree topped by the six, but the the ten is right where he wants to put his bridge hand, and it makes him elevate a little bit in the back. So, you don't expect it to cause a problem, but it's little things like that that turn a shot that's not missable into a missable ball. Nice recovery, but this position on the five here isn't the best. See if we can get that overhead again, Steven. Let's see if the six passes the 10 in the bottom left here. I think it does. So I think we may see Fetter just go ahead and play the six ball in the same pocket as the five here. He made it a little funny though. Yeah. Overrunning position for the four ball really, really made this rack play a lot tougher now. Made him come up short on the five because of his awkward bridge over the 10. And now all of a sudden he's he's faced with a with a position here that's less than ideal. You expect him to recover, but it's it's those opportunities that start to stack up on you. And he's right back where he needs to be, Phil. Yeah. But you see what I'm saying there though? Like it's he got out, but he put himself in a situation where it could have got a little funny on him. Just by over hitting the three ball just a touch. Put him in a little bit of trouble, but he recovered nicely. He's four balls away from continuing on to the championship here. Five hundred dollar entry, twenty one players started. After this match we're gonna be down to three. The winner of this will play the winner of our next match, John Moore and Warren Kiamko. See Fetter stay underneath the nine ball here and play the nine in the top left.
He went ahead and went two rails above it. He loves that shot. He Often drills that shot right there. Swept its feet on the way in. But it's one of the most common there. drills. That... Can you hear me okay, Steven? Yeah, I think you cut out there for just a second. But uh, okay. I think you're good now. Yeah, that eight ball swept its feet a little bit, but he still made it. And he's two balls away. And Wait. that's it. 11 to 10, Fetter Gores. Awesome match. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. On Mega TV, this is Jason Sword and Phil and Stephen Wyatt. Don't go anywhere. Warren Kiamko versus John Moore coming up next. The yeah. winner of that will face off against Fetter Gorse to claim the title here at Rats on the Rocks. Ten ball.